God to succeed. I say my prayers every day, but on the Sabbath, I make sure that I say, take to God my needs, my challenges, my worries. They told most of you, look at you. In Africa, you're always praying. Go to China. People are working. And you can no longer do God's job. They say so winning. You say no, I, I, I'm going for an, a, a, a conference. And they kill the passion to seek God. Because they were using China as a reference. How many of them are going to heaven? And the people calling China, China. Do you know how many gods are in China? Oh, look at India. They are working. They are companies. Do you know how many gods are in India? Do you know the gods they worship? You are seeing company. Do you know the shrines they enter? Hey, look at America. They are prospering. Go and study the history of America. And look at what the founding fathers knew. You came from a dark heritage where all your ancestors were worshippers of idol. You are saying America, they have company. This is a nation that has a, a slogan in God we trust. Is, 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 is it who put it there? Does it not suggest to you that this is a nation that has its foundation in God? The people you are seeing now are enjoying the heritage of the patriarchs. You come from a nation of idol worshippers. You are saying, look at America. They are the companies they are working. They don't have understanding. Don't talk to people who are shallow. Go and check their currency. In God we trust. They put it on their money. Is that not on the dollar? In God we trust. And you are here. You say company, company. You don't know nothing about America. And that you are living there does not mean you know there. You went four years ago, you think you know anything about the country. What have you read about the nation? Hey, hey, they, they are just praying, praying in Nigeria. Do you know how many years this man served God? Go and check the chapter of these nations and see what the values of these nations are built on. If you enter the, 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 the U.S. Parliament, if you stand where the, the, at, the, at the, the platform in front there is the statue of Moses that is in front of you. You look straight. You will see Moses. Moses. The Moses of the Bible. That's, that's the figure that they look upon to lead their parliament. Who is Moses? He was the one who taught Israel laws and status. That's why the American parliament has the image of Moses there. To remind them that they are sustaining the government of heaven. And you, you are here, you are telling America, America. What do you know about America? Nations that have foundation in God are prospering because of those foundations. There is no nation on earth that gives more than Americans. Ask anybody who is in a business or in a ministry or in a company. Anything you are doing, if an American believes in it, before you ask, he starts sponsoring it. They give as if they are mad because they believe things and they know how things work. And that's the nation you are here. You are saying, hey, hey they, 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 all the Western nations, they are working. Hey, we, we are praying. We have not dug our word. That's why we are praying. We are still learning to trust God. We are still learning to seek God. We are still learning to give. We don't know it. If you like, vomit your heart to a Nigerian. He won't give you nothing. He doesn't know it. But meet an American on the street. If he understands your vision, he doesn't need to know you. He will just support you. All of this disaster that happened, how do you think this nation succeed? If there is a disaster, maybe people's houses are burned. Before you wake up, some people will, 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 will take leave of absence from work and come to area where there is disaster and they will work there for four days. They will bring clothes, they will bring food from nowhere. They don't need to know you. They don't need your thank you. The principle is natural to them. What we are teaching in church today that we are fighting is natural to those nations. And here they say, give, you argue, you argue. <laughs> we don't know what makes men. And we are, we are talking things that we don't understand. All the billionaires you are calling, that they don't need God. Go and check how much they have given for charity. You will be shocked that you don't know what you are saying. God wants all of us to be blessed. But we must know how it works. And Jesus taught us three principles. He said the lilies don't work. It's not encouraging you not to walk. But it's telling you that even the lilies that don't walk, they don't worry themselves. And he said if you trust God, he will bless you the way he blesses the lilies. And he said the lilies are so blessed that they have more glory than Solomon. To give you an idea of how God increases men that trust him. Number two, he says seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said all these things shall be added to you. 
that means if you seek God and seek to live right God prospers you and number three he said give it shall be given to you good measure pressed down shaking together and running over there is a dimension of wealth that God is about to bring his children into so that they can advance his kingdom and so that they can live a fulfilled life so if you are going to church because you want to be rich financially your problem is ignorance anybody that uses the gospel of Christ to promise you material wealth is lying to you and scamming you I repeat anybody that uses the gospel of Jesus to promise you material wealth is lying to you and scamming you because even Jesus himself the owner of salvation did not make anybody rich nobody followed Jesus and was rich instead they followed Jesus and they lacked and they say master wait first before we go too much we have left all to follow you we can't see any profit Jesus said don't worry <laughs> you will gain a hundredfold in this world and in the world to come Peter said okay we are watching the moment they killed Jesus Peter went back to fishing he went back to fishing when Jesus rose he went to look for him he said Peter where are you Peter said I'm a sinful man he said yeah yeah come come let's continue our journey I'm teaching good I say I'm teaching good renewing the mind is critical it's not just knowing that a new creature in Christ you have to renew your mind on what you call power you know some people so when you are shouting that you had an encounter we must understand who did you encounter how do you see that Davido's father gave a powerful testimony of how God was able to help him for a contract of two billion dollars no media bloggers are carrying it I think it's only few that carried some that carried deleted the video why because jesus christ was glorified how could they, how can how can it be possible that a wealthy man has an altar how can it be possible that a man has an altar that even when the the, 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 the chinese man or the white man refused to believe in the altar he said that's all i know how to fight my battle and on the sabbath day he went and presented before the lord and something mighty came nobody wants to carry the news even some believers are not sharing the videos because everybody believed that how can a man be so wealthy and is giving credit to God? You think every rich man is in the awkward. That's a poor man, a poor man mentality. Every man that is wealthy is doing something bad. No. There are genuine men that have altar that sustain them. Two thousand dollars. I'm sorry, two billion dollars. Someone is about to lose two billion dollars. I don't know how to calculate it in Naira. Because it must be in one trillion. That money can change your entire generation for that. Your generation, generation, generation. In fact, if any of your generation become poor, they must be, they must be have destiny to be poor. And this man was not jumping up and down. Like some of you, your 500 naira is missing. You are restless. He was not jumping up and down. He went before God and knew before God. You wonder why God seems to hear prayer of a rich man. There are some things that man didn't say that he did that we didn't know. There might have been some sacrifice that he made, not demonic sacrifice. He might have made some pledges somewhere. You might have gone to the orphanage, but there's something I noticed from that message. Faith. From the message of what he shared, I didn't, I'm not testing whether his spirit is of God or not. No, but he said God Almighty. There is one God Almighty. And he mentioned Sabbath and he quoted about two scriptures there. That man is a Christian. Not every wealthy man can come boldly and talk about Jesus in public. Because they are afraid of their connection. Yet, that's how we'll see many men. Look at Dr. Cosmos. I think it's Dr. Cosmos, they call him, right? Is it doctor? I don't know if it's doctor. It's Dr. Maruka Cosmos. No, no university, no nothing, nothing. And look at where he is. And he raised the Bible as his yardstick for success. And a man, people say, you me a man under 24 hours made 14 billion naira because he heard the voice of God. How do you explain these things? With all his wealth, he's still preaching the gospel. You are making a side of 50,000. You your pride is too much for you to preach Jesus. There is a man wealthy to the fault. And yet, he stays on the street doing evangelism. He Sometimes he doesn't have the, all the words, the vocabulary to express it. You could see this man, this man jumping because he's trying to find utterance. And yet, he's speaking it. 
These are people that have kingdom mind. Kingdom, you, the, the small job you have got, you have started missing church. The little breakthrough you have, you've missed church. If they call you and say, oh, come, we're having a prayer meeting. You say, you are busy, you are working. I don't have a problem with that. It's good to work. But you know that some of you, why you are in the church now, if your company calls you now and says, we need you, you will take a excuse from the church and go to that place. It talks about where your treasure of your heart is. We value more of the physical thing than the spiritual thing. Yes, have value for the physical thing, but put more value in the spiritual thing. Watch also. What man? There are many that started this journey of righteousness, this journey of the working with God that will stop on the way. And there are men that didn't start that where others stop, they will pick the cross for them and continue. You see, if you get to the end point, God will ask you for your cross. You will need to present the cross you carried in order to cross over. If that cross you carried do not come with you to the finish line, you won't cross over. You will remain in that place. Carry your cross. It is painful. If it was sweet, it would not be called cross. But the cross of the devil is harder than the one that God is giving. He said, come to me, all you are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Carry my yoke upon you, for mine is light. The reason why he is light is not because it is light. It is light because he's the one that helps you to carry it. You don't need God to succeed. I say my prayers every day, but on the Sabbath, I make sure that I say, take to God my needs, my challenges, my worries. And when I stand up from praying on the Sabbath, I have that God feeling that everything is okay. If I may, I'll just tell you a, a, a story about... Uh, okay, thank you. I'm a businessman in Nigeria. I'm in the electricity business. I own um, power plants. I generate presently about 15% of the electricity need for Nigeria. I have uh, Chinese engineering companies that work for me. I'm building almost completed by January, by the grace of God, uh, my new power plant that will be the biggest thermal plant in Nigeria, say 1,250 megawatts power plant, will become operational in January. But during the course of the design and getting all the permits, we ran into difficult government officials. For environmental reasons, our permit was denied. The particular government official that I held a meeting with told me to my face that this, your project, will never see the light of day. But while he was saying that, I was saying in my mind that this guy is talking as if he's God. <laughs> and because we are not God, I couldn't say it out, but I was saying it in my mind that God listened to him. Because he's not God, Whatever he, has, whatever he is saying is null and void. I'm not going to be worried about it. So I left, disappointed of course, and I told my Chinese friend that look, unfortunately, we have these difficulties and it seems that it's going to be a while before we can get this going again. Meanwhile, you see, 1,250 megawatts power plant, price tag is about 2 billion US dollars. So it's not small money. So in the process, a lot of money has already gone into design and the preliminaries before we got to the stage where we must have the environmental um, permit before we can break ground. So my Chinese friend said, what are we going to do now? This is very serious because the Afro-Exim Bank of China was involved. And that might have you know, meant bankruptcy for him, for his company, because they have invested so much with me in, in, in this. So I told him not to worry that everything's going to be all right. And um, he said that he's worried 
do you know somebody that can take you to the president or to speak to someone? I said, don't worry about it. That everything was you know, going to be okay. And he said, are you sure? He said, no, no, I'm not going to do this on, on this. On the, I'm coming to see you. It seems that you've, you found a solution, so I'm coming to see you. So while on his way, I got on my knees and I prayed about it. And I asked God to make all things well. And I, so when my friend came to me face to face, he said, that, yes, Mr. Chairman, um, he called me Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, so what is the solution uh, about this? It seems you are not worried. I said, I'm not worried because I've prayed about it. And God is going to make it right. My friend became very upset with me. <laughs> he said, God cannot do this. Says, for, this is not about God now. This is not about your church. Please, Mr. Chairman, put this aside. We are talking serious issues now. <laughs> and I said, that is the only way I know to go about it. On the Sabbath, it was like on Thursday, Friday I prayed about it. On Sabbath, I prayed as, as I always do and presented this issue before God Almighty. And I challenged God and I said, God, see, my friend said you cannot do this. So please show up. Not only to convince my Chinese friend, but also the government official that is trying to block us. Let him know that you are God Almighty and there's none like you. Amen. So I continue to pray about it. The following week, on a Wednesday, I got a call from the Ministry of Power that I should come to the minister's office. So I went. And I was handed over my permit. Amen. Amen. I didn't know what happened. All I did was pray about this. So I looked. So I asked one of the officials, what exactly happened? Why am I collecting this from this office and not the other office? And the person told me that the particular government official that wanted to block us took heel and that he was flown to Germany for treatment. And that some of the applications for permit for other types of uh, factories, not electricity, was sitting on his table and that his boss, somebody that knew his boss, the top person. I'm using the word because I don't want to say exactly the, the office. So his boss now said he should bring all the applications to his table since he was not there. So my application was one of those that was taken. And his boss wrote on my own application, this is, this is a very good proposal. We need electricity as we need the air. This should, this should be encouraged, and I want a report on the progress of this project every quarter. So that was why I was called to come and pick up from the minister's office the permit. So when I saw my Chinese friend, and I told him that we have the permit already, he said, what did you do? I said, I prayed. That's what I did. He said, he didn't believe me. He said, did you, did you bribe anybody? I said, I did not. It's even dangerous. I can't even bribe people at that level. He said, so you believed your, your prayer? I said, I said, yes. He said, what happened? I said, the, that other guy took heel and he was flown outside for treatment. And he said, did you ask your God to make him sick? I said, no, <laughs> I did not. 
ask my God to make him sick. Um, I just prayed. And that all I know is that all things work together for good for those who love God. So I told him it was God that did it. Thereafter, something stuck to the mind of my friend who did not believe in God. Anytime we run into any challenges during the process of building this uh, huge power plant, he became not, he was no more worried. Well, he tells me that, Chairman, when you go to church on Saturday, report to your God, okay? <laughs> and I will show him that on Saturday, on the Sabbath, when I go to the church, to church, I'm going to report to the Lord. And I don't know if he has worked for you, but he has always worked for me. That it seems that prayers that are, that are said on the Sabbath are answered faster <laughs> than other prayers. And like the story I told you before, over the years, that sermon from that Catholic priest has always talked with me. I've had rumors about church leaders, elders doing, so, doing all kinds of things, but it has not affected me. Because I've, I've always said to myself that we are all human beings. That anybody can be tempted, and I'm not, I'm not going to allow any behavior of a pastor or a president or whatever in the church to affect my focus. Because my focus is our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need God to succeed. Am I teaching here? You don't need God to succeed. Look at Warren Buffett. Look at Bill Gates. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, who, who invented Apple, said there is no God. That God is a figment of the imagination of a poor man. That it is because you are poor and you don't know how to cure poverty. So you create a God inside your mind that does not exist. That is Steve Jobs, the owner of Apple. Very successful. So you don't need God to succeed. So we don't come to church to succeed. He now said Jesus was born of poverty. People were rich before Jesus came. And people are rich without Jesus. You don't need Jesus to be rich. People were rich before Jesus came. And without Jesus, there are very many rich people who don't believe in Christ. Who don't even believe in God. <laughs> you better listen to me now. Follow me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't need Jesus to be rich, to be wealthy. You don't need Jesus to marry. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Listen. You don't need God to prosper. The richest people on earth don't know Christ. And they don't care about him. Welcome you child of God, new subscribers, thank you so much for joining me, returning once, I appreciate your support, thank you so much, I'm grateful. Global Baba, <laughs> Global Baba, <laughs> Davido's father has proved you wrong, yes, you said that you don't need God to succeed, that we don't need our God to prosper, now today, Davido's father has proved you wrong. That he needs his God to prosper. That his prosperity comes from his God. That whatever he is doing as a billionaire, he needs his God. He normally invites his God. For those that don't understand what is going on here, Groba Baba, Dr. Abba Damina, came out some, some years ago, and claim that you don't need God to succeed. What you need is just no acquire no rich, just normal way of getting rich. But Christians, we don't need to invite our God in terms of prosperity. And many pastors began to debate on it. Many said no. I'll put a link on the description. This one now is part, part three of Apostle Ar Michael Robo. Say no to this teaching. In fact, another part is also coming because I saw another video where he was also saying the same thing. 
that we need our God to prosper. Now, I want to appreciate the speakers. I think that if the video's father has finished what I want, <laughs> I need my God to prosper. I disagree with you, Dr. Elba Damina, on this. Sorry, I need my God. In fact, I don't only need this God to prosper. I need him to eat. I need him to sleep. I need him to do any, everything in life. Whatever that my God will be absent in whatever I'm doing, I think I don't need to do that. If I say that I don't need God to prosper, that means my God is useless in the area of my prosperity. That means I want, it's just me giving glory to myself. That I made it by myself because my God is not involved. I don't need him. I can do all this. I can do, I can prosper without my God. How? For me, I'm seeing that statement as insult to my God. For me to say that I don't need my Jesus to prosper. For me, it's insult. See, child of God, if God is not involved in whatever you are doing, you will struggle. A man that does not go with his God in his office will struggle. We go with our God. Native doctors put on their own gods and move around with it. Which doctors, all manners, of all the all other religions, other religions move around with their God. We have our own God in our own self by ourselves here. We don't put our God on our waist. Or anywhere. Our God is always with us. Now, how can you say that you don't need your God to prosper? Meanwhile, that God is always is in you. God is in you as a Christian. And you still say that you don't need your God to prosper. So meaning, you don't need yourself to prosper. You don't need yourself to prosper. Like just the meaning. You don't need what is your content. What makes you human being? You don't need it to prosper. How? Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. Bible said that the work of your hands shall be blessed. The work of your hands shall be blessed. This is the, the promise of God. The work of your hands shall be blessed. So you must be doing something. We're not talking like now. If you look at this video now, Dr. Abadam said that you don't need God to prosper. Anybody that is promising you that you're going to prosper is coming you through prosperity in as in Bible. Of course, you need your God to prosper. You need your God to prosper, sir. For me, it's an insult. I'm I just, I don't even know where to start. I just want to say thank you. Uh, somebody who said, but this man is a politician. They are, they, they, because I posted this on, on Facebook. So people began to comment. It's a politician. Uh, they know how to manipulate people and make their money. So God is not involved. Me, if you join the people that scam people, I don't know, that do scam Nigerians, their wealth and others. So you don't count him as a pioneer. Uh, that God prosper. This thing that he said, now nobody knows whether it's true or he's lying just to cover up after stealing from innocent poor people in Nigeria, stealing their wealth in them because he was a, well, he was a governor of his state. So, me, I don't know that part. I'm only telling you what the man said. The man said that he needed his God to prosper. Dr. Ebed, I mean, I said, talk about Chinese billionaires, how they made their money without God. Yes, they made their money without God, but they have their own God that's serving. They have, see, once you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus. You can't do anything without Him. Jesus never do anything without His Father. I and my Father are one. So how can you, being a Christian, say that you don't need your own Father to prosper? How? I think I should end this video here because this video is just, this is practical. The other one that I posted is the one of Aaron Marx. Where he was talking about this our God, Christianity, lamenting over the, uh, the Christianity, the situation of Christianity today. That Christians should wake up and do something because the way the thing is going, that people who, who may not have interest in Christianity in years to come. He also talked about how he, he I will put the link on the description it's on YouTube. Okay? You don't need God to prosper. He's there on my channel on YouTube. So he talk about how he lost his uh, his son in a mistress way. He, he a lot a lot. So those things a lot. So it's well though. Please tell the God. You need the God to prosper. And Amos did not in any way 
agree with Dr. Ebed Amina's message that said that he don't need God to prosper. No, he recognized God. He knows that there is God. He believes in our own God, even if he's not a Christian, but he believes in our God. So let's end here, please. This video is, is clear. This is just, we need our God to prosper. I want to appreciate Prophet Emmanuel Okeke. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Albert Damina, my brother, Apostle Michael Robo, and David O's father, Baba Adeleke. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for listening. Please, what is your opinion on this? Do you need your God to prosper? Do you need Jesus to prosper? Or is God useless in the area of your prosperity? Will you give glory to yourself when you succeed? Or will, or will you give glory to your master when you succeed? Don't forget, a man that forgets his God will always struggle in anything he's doing. Any man that did not go with his maker. When David was facing the challenges of his life, he went with his God. He defeated Goliath. All the days of his life, he has been with his God. He never leave his God behind. Even when he, supposed, he, he, he wanted to pursue them, he said, Father, should I pursue them? Should I, will I overcome? So please, child of God, in anything you are doing, always go with your God. With your God, the journey will be easier. There will be no struggle. If you say that you don't need your God to prosper, that means if your business is shaking, you don't need to invite God after you never needed him. After you never invited him. You don't need to say, God, show me mercy. Father, see this business. He said that the work of your hand shall be blessed. See, my business is going down. Please show me mercy, Lord. Father, connect me with people that matters. Restore this business back. It, uh, uh, restore this my business. You don't need to pray such prayer because you don't need God to prosper. I have one question to Dr. Ebed Amina, sir. Do you used to pray for uh, financial prosperity for your members? Do you used to pray that God should prosper them, whatever they are doing? If you used to pray such prayer, then why do you now say that you don't need God to prosper? Because you used to pray for them to prosper, and you are still saying that you don't need, they don't need their God to prosper. How? Do you need your God to prosper in your ministry? If the answer is yes, why? Why do you invite God in your ministry? Because it's your business. So you don't need the God to prosper. You don't need God to prosper in your in the business of ministry, in your ministry business. You don't need your God to prosper. How is it possible, my child of God? So please, let's preach what the disciples preach. Any other preaching for me is another gospel. Apostle Paul says, if any man preach any other gospel, let him be a cause. We must be very careful never to see this our God as useless God. Never to present our God as, a use, as useless in some part of our lives. No. We must be very careful never to present God useless in some part of our life so that unbelievers will celebrate, yes, their God is even useless in this part. If you don't need our God to prosper, then we don't need our God to do anything. We don't need God to prosper. This, you say you saw uh, Dr. Albert Amina. He said we don't need God. In, uh, God doesn't give baby. You don't need God to prosper. God doesn't need baby. So meaning that you don't need God in area of your fruitfulness. You don't need God to prosper. No, sir. I disagree. I wish you can look into this, Dr. Albert Amina. Do I do respect? I love you by the grace of God. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. But I disagree with this teaching. I wish you can look into this teaching and address it. So thank you guys for listening. Love you guys. Bye.